Do it. Cool. Hey everyone, welcome to another uh, to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Today I'm here with my friend from church, Evan Lawler, also from California. We're two California boys. Yay! And today we're actually drinking something that Evan brought, a California beer. Modern Times Borderville. Roll credits. And the sexies, of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm like following your lead here, so. <laughs> oh, you're pointing. Are you, are you actually left-handed? No. No, okay. Poor luck Was that left improper form? Oh, jeez, man. You, you totally threw off the first groove. I mean, for reals, man. So you brought this over. What do you like about this beer? So I can't name exactly what it is that I like about okay. it. I'm hoping maybe you can enlighten me a little bit. The doctor bit. is in. Of course, yeah. So, I mean, I know that I like hazy IPAs, uh -huh. and Modern Times themselves, they, I mean, they've released a bunch of hazy IPAs, uh, mm -hmm. let alone other ones. Who of course, who hasn't? Yeah. 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 Um, so to me, I like the, as with any hazy. Actually, I know a brewery that hasn't. Shameless plug for one of my favorite locals, Headless Mumby. No hazy IPAs. But back to our right. That takes some serious gusto. <laughs> it does. In the market, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, Continue. you're good. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I guess you're. Just, I'm hoping that you can explain to me, if you will, what what it is that I like about it over other ones. So I, okay. you know, I, I like the the citrus and mm -hmm. the it's overplayed, but the juiciness uh -huh. in a lot of the hazy IPAs. Um, Definitely. Yeah. And in this particular one, I get some of that. I feel like it's a little drier than oh, other ones that I've had. But okay, we can save that till we actually, you know, dig in. We will speak, dig in. So. Um, just off the bat, what I'm smelling, tons of pineapple. Yes. Like, this is really light on the citrus. It is, they're made, it's a featuring mosaic hops, which are a pretty popular hop in hazies. Um, it also has sultana hops, which is interesting, um, especially because they're noted for their resinous stickiness. Um, and resin is more a uh, characteristic you're going to expect in a West Coast IPA, the the, the sharper, okay. harder, yeah. bitter, um, less hazy IPAs. Mm -hmm. What do you smell in here? I was actually going to say, you know, feel pretty good about myself that I do smell pineapple on the <laughs> top. Um, yeah, I mean that one I think is fairly obvious though. So there's I something don't give myself too many points for it. It's it's pineapple though without the like the the acidic bite to the pineapple nose like it's Agreed. not a sharp pineapple it's a soft pineapple so maybe an almost an overripe pineapple yeah i could see that but i think it's also tempered a lip, little bit with just kind of a general what we might call tropical character mm -hmm. uh maybe that's passion fruit guava uh not mango maybe like guava and passion fruit though yeah just, just tempering but it's still mostly pineapple definitely um head wise or color wise it's not the haziest of IPAs, but it's definitely there. I would say this is uh, um, diluted orange juice color. Yeah, that's it's safe to say. Definitely to the orange side. It's not like a honey um, or a gold. It, I think that might just be the haziness, though. Or certainly some that, you know, I've had, and I'm sure you have as well, that almost look like orange juice in oh, consistency. Oh, goodness, yeah. As as, yeah. My experience with Modern Times has been their milkshake IPAs from several years ago. And the, the tall boy cans, I loved them. And they a lot of them poured like super thick and they almost had that that weird kind of uh, silvery line look when you pour. Yeah. yeah. Um, like those squeeze toys with the belt and weird <laughs> yeah. stuff inside, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, I've not actually had a Modern Times in quite some time. So I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. Uh, shall we dig in? Let's go for it. It's interesting that you call it dry. It's very interesting. Now you, you told me if I'm dry. right or I'm wrong. Tell me what you're tasting. So I do get that kind of that tropical fruit fruit flavor. Uh -huh. um, I'm not tasting a whole lot of pineapple, which for me I think is good because I'm not. I I would never just eat pineapple by itself. I prefer maybe more pineapple essence, if you will. I'm sorry. I knew there was something I disliked about you. I had to be set. We There's not a whole lot of anymore. things to dislike about me, but <laughs> I suppose I'll forgive this one thing. 
you know, overall, you're a decent package. I appreciate so, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A little bit of bro love here. Yeah. I mean, de- so that, to me, there's definitely a little bit of that bitterness that you expect from an okay. IPA. Um, not overwhelmingly so, as with a lot of your West Coast Mm-mm. IPAs. What I'm tasting. So, yeah, like you, there's not really a pineapple character to it. It is. It's a really soft orange juice, almost like Sunny Delight. Yeah. That kind of super sweet round all the acid's been shaved off it's just smooth sweet but there's also a tropical note once again um it's along the same vein as what we smelled so Mm -hmm. a beer that tastes like it smells i mean i'm not going to say that's a sign of a good beer but i i like that i also like when that's not the case but i like that because you know what you're getting right yeah um it's a complete package and so these the kind of guava um passion fruit um, smooth, non-acidic tropical fruits in there. And then just this really kind of soft, mild, um, really sweet orange Agreed. without the acidity yes, at all. And then uh, after the first maybe two seconds, the the resin, which they mentioned the Sultana hops, mm-hmm. that resinous quality comes in. And that's what you were saying about the West Coast IPA. Gotcha. Um, that's a really, really appreciated thing, I think, in this. Because if you didn't have this have that this would taste like you're drinking uh, grown up sunny d which i mean that's the taste of childhood Might but not if you be the worst really thing. think about it it's actually not the best flavor <laughs> this is true yeah like i said it helps to round out the sweetness whereas i don't yeah. want to be drinking a beer maybe with some exceptions uh dessert stout or something mm-hmm. like that um per, i'm not the biggest fan of overly mm-hmm. sweet beers to me so like i said me having that to round out the the flavor profile definitely if you will at the end yes yeah that was a yeah. thoughtful and a very a very necessary addition to this they yeah. didn't have to use sultana hops you could have used any of the the myriad of west coast hops uh to, to produce that bitterness but um it's a good hop to use it definitely works in here and it's definitely a good thing that they used it yeah now so that's actually not one that i have heard of in a whole lot of beers i imagine they're probably in some that i've drank and i just didn't notice yeah there aren't that many beers that actually advertise sultana hot yeah yeah usually i mean you'll see your mosaic or or galaxy or um i guess whatever's in with the cool kids with ipas now i'm a little out of touch (laughs) chinooks um yeah yeah i mean yep it's a good beer i do like that yeah i would say that because it's so sweet even with the the bittering hop finish there, it's not really a great super hot weather beer. I agree. It's a better moderate weather beer. So 70 to 85 degrees, great. It's 90 degrees outside today here in Olympia, Washington. Yeah. Yay. Hey, it's actually the 4th of July. So happy birthday, America. Um, I mean, America. America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so for this, I would definitely, on this sort of day, I'd be looking for something that's hoppier, like a West Coast, like a full-on hardcore West Coast IPA. Yeah. Or something that's crisper and maltier, like a Pilsner, possibly a Kolsch, mm-hmm. something like that. Um, but yeah, if it's a mild day, actually probably 65 to 75 would be like cooler, optimal, I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah, and, a very polite way to dunk on the beer that I brought. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm really gonna have to adjust audio on that. It doesn't like how loud I got. <laughs> it's just because you're, you're so excited. Yeah, yeah. Well, I no, never I do, do agree that it's, it's it's not something I would sit and think like, boy, this is a great beer for sitting out and you know watching a game or lighting off explosives as we. If it were an later. evening baseball game, sure. And it you know the the clouds are kind of broken up. Yeah, yeah. This would be like super optimal. I I like the sweetness. It's really cool. I like that sweetness. That mm-hmm. the that's a, a pleasant thing. It's kind of unexpected, um, but I think it's really just characteristic of the, of the hazy IPA style. I like yeah. that they added that bitterness that was really necessary. Without it, the beer would be far less than it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so they made good choices in that. And hey, it's a good beer. I'm not complaining too loud. It's free for me. Too loud. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this is Matthew. And I'm Evan. And we've been chewing the brew. And we'll catch y'all on the flip side. Mm-hmm.